Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and uh, a couple days ago, maybe it was yesterday, yesterday I did a video that showed you guys how to do some basic Kogo. Uh, so we were drafting part of a survey map, and it, I wanted to do a second video. We didn't do any curves in that video, and we didn't really deal with any tricky stuff, so I wanted to do another video that taught you a little more. It's, it's not always as simple as... Uh, has drawn some rectangles like we did in the example from the, the first video so I wanted to show you something that was a little more complicated and so we're gonna do that we're gonna work on drafting this tax assessor map that I've got here and uh, I don't usually draft tax assessor maps <laughs> I tell people tax assessor maps are basically cartoons and they're dangerous <laughs> and you shouldn't use them and then one of the very first things I taught my new survey tech was uh, how to go with this tax assessor map. So I'm a hypocrite. Uh, this is kind of a special case. We've got some information on this road right over here that's on this tax assessor map that we can't find anywhere else. And We actually called the tax assessor's mapping department and tried to figure out where they got this information. They couldn't tell us. And eventually we found it. It's in some deeds. Uh, but the deeds are really hard to read. And uh, the purpose of this video is not to teach you how to Kogo deeds. I'll probably do another video on that. Uh, but I want to show you how to how to Kogo. This has got some curves in it, some tangent curves. And it's got this little tricky thing right here in this corner of, of Tax Assessor Parcel 6. And it's missing some information, and it's a little uh, a little more difficult. There's a little little bit of a funky thing over here on Venner Road that we got to deal with. So uh, I thought it would be a good example. And so I'm doing this video for my CAD, uh, future CAD ninja, Austin Hart, and uh, he already he already practiced on this, but I wanted to record the video so he could watch it again if he needed to. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my layer dialog here. We want to be good drafters and practice good, uh, good layer management. And so I want to make sure that I have a... Uh, I think I have all the layers I need. Uh, I'm gonna instead of block on this one, I'm gonna say uh, right of way sidelines because we don't really have blocks in this example. So I'm just gonna create a sideline layer, and uh, I'm gonna make that uh, make it red for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a dash. I'm gonna do a different dash than the. Uh, tie line which is dash haft. I'm gonna just make this regular dashed. Okay. Uh, but we're gonna start with the right away center line as our current layer. Alright, so we got our layer set up. So we're gonna start over here. We're gonna draft this piece and then we're gonna move kind of westerly and northerly till we get down to this cul-de-sac. So you'll notice here the first thing I have is this bearing and distance. You'll notice most of my bearings are only showed to the nearest minute. That's okay. So we got north 2110 west with a distance of 18366. So let's go ahead and draw that. So I'm going to come up to my ribbon. And I'm going to grab my line by bearing tool. And it doesn't really matter where we start for this. So I'm northwest is my quadrant, number four. I'm at 2110. And I'm at 183.66. Okay, so there's my first line. You can see it's on the right layer. That's this piece of the road right here. All right, this next piece is uh, next piece of the road that we need. This road center line is a little bit tricky because it doesn't give us a bearing. So this piece right here, we don't have a bearing, we only have a distance. We're going to assume that's perpendicular. Um, and obviously we got to treat assumed information cautiously. <laughs> but we're going to assume for now that that's perpendicular. And uh, we're going to put that in at 50 feet. So to do that, we're just going to use our perpendicular snap. So I'm going to start a line over here. I'm going to go to perpendicular. Then I'm going to move this line to the end where I need it. Okay, and then I'm going to use the lengthen command, like we did in the last video, uh, to specify that that should be 50 feet. Okay, so now we've got that next little piece, 
then we come over. Um, now you got to be careful here because he's got uh, he's got these distances broken up. So let's see. And in this case, I probably just want the longest distance I can get. It's a little bit tricky. It looks like he's got 290.34 to here or 209.34 to here. Yeah, no, this is 209.34 here. This is 229.66. Then he's got 286. So it looks like we got three distances to go there. So we're going to go on the bottom, 229.66, 209.34, and 286. Here's our bearing, south 79.30 west. Okay, so we're going to draw that again by bearing, line by bearing. So our bearing is in the southwest, uh, south. No, let's see. That is, he says that's a bearing of northwest. But that doesn't, that sure doesn't look, oh no, that's wrong. Southwest, I'm sorry, bearing quadrant three. Okay, and we got 79.30 for our bearing. And then we're going to go these three distances, and I'm going to break them up. So we're going to go 229.66. Okay, then we're, then uh, the way this is set up, you got to enter your bearing again. So southwest, 79.30. Then he goes 209.34. Okay, then we got to enter that uh, quadrant and bearing one more time. So southwest, 79.30. And we go 286.00. All right. So that's going to get us down to the curve, and we haven't done a curve yet. So let's just look at our tax assessor map real quick. So we started here, came up to this point, put in our 50-foot perpendicular line. Then we went down these three distances. So right now we're at our beginning of curve, and we're going to assume, got to do some assumptions here, uh, that this is a tangent curve. Okay, so usually if you don't get a radial line, you're dealing with the tangent curve. So we're going to put in this curve. So let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, so curves are a little bit different. We're going to grab this here, and we're going to say, yeah, so they don't have it on the arc menu. Right here, create curve from end of object. That's what we want. Okay, so we're going to grab the object that we're going to go from the end of, which is this line. And it's going to say, hey, I'm drawing it based on this line. And it tells you which end you're moving from, and that's based on where you pick. Okay, so I picked on this half of the line, so it picked this end. Okay, and then it gives you a couple prompts. It says, what do you want to use? Do you want to use a radius or a point? We're going to hit enter because we're going to use the radius. The tax assessor map shows that with a radius of 276.4, which is a little kind of odd for a radius, but okay. Okay, and then it's going to say, do you want to use tangent, chord, delta, length, or external, or mid-ordinate? We want to use length, so we're going to set hit enter because that's the default. And the length on our chord is 110.98. And now you'll notice... When you look at the tax assessor map, that my curve drew the wrong direction. Actually, I used the wrong information too, and that's because this is a curve to the left, not a curve to the right. So the way you, you imagine that is you stand at the end of the line that you're drawing a curve from, okay, and you face the end of the line, so we're facing this direction, and you ask yourself, does the curve swing away to the left or the right? Is it open to the left or the right? In this case, this is a curve to the left, so you've got to use a negative radius. But I used the wrong information, so let's just redo that whole curve, huh? Because I goofed up. So we're just going to delete that. We're going to come back in to curve from end of object. Tag our line. We're going from this end. We want to enter the radius. This radius is 265. Okay, length. Oh, I messed up because I need a curve to the left. So let me do it one more time. Curve from end of object. Pick the line. Okay, we're going to accept the radius, the default there. But this time we're going to put in a negative radius because that's how you get it to draw a curve to the left. So negative 265. Okay, we're going to accept the default for length there as our other parameter. And the length that they give us on this one is 119.48. Okay, so there's our curve. And it looks like it drew in the right direction. So we just drew this curve right here. Okay, now we've got a straight line segment down to here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in. And then we got a, we got a little bit of a tricky thing we're going to fix after we draw that. So we're going to draw from the end of this curve. Our quadrant is southwest, number three. Our bearing is 5340. Okay, and our distance is 226.1. All right, so here's what we've got. Now, you'll notice on the tax assessor map that this line, 226.1, goes all the way down to the edge of the road. 
So I've got a center line here that doesn't intersect a center line, it intersects a side line. And that is not what I want. I want to draw the center line so then I can do my offsets. Okay, so that's a little bit tricky. And so what we got to do here is uh, we got to put in our center line. And I know that this is a 50 foot wide road. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to draw this next line. Let me pull it over so you can see it. We're going to go ahead and draw this line. Okay, at a bearing of south 3350 239.73, and then we're going to offset it for our center line. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to change layers here because I know I'm not on the center line anymore. I'm on the side line. So we'll draw a line by bearing. Click that endpoint. Okay, and now the assessor map says southeast, but I need to know that I'm going opposite direction, so I really want northwest. Okay. So that's quadrant four northwest. We've got 33.0.50 for our bearing. And we're going 239.73. Okay, now that line we just drew is the side line, not the center line. So I want to create my center line. And I'm going to do that using the offset command. And I know I want 25 feet because that's the half width of the right of way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the center line layer. Okay. And I'm actually going to break this line here because this piece right here is no longer the center line. Okay. Before I do that, I'm going to trim this to clean it up. So the reason we have that little bit of overlap is this center line is not exactly 90 degrees to this center line. That's why we had a little bit of a dangle there. Okay, now we're going to run the break command. We're going to grab our line. We're going to tell it the first break point is here. That's also the last break point. Now we've got this little piece is separate, and we can just drop that on our tile layer. Okay, and let's change the appearance of that side lines layer. I don't want white. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with cyan, and I'm going to make that just regular dashed. Okay. All right, so now we don't have a distance up the center line to this point. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky. What we have to do is we've actually got to draw in. We may not be able to get this at all. So I don't have a way to draw this curve because I don't have a, a cord bearing or a radial to draw this off of. So this is, a, this is why we're doing this map. It's a little bit tricky. Okay, so here's how we're going to get this done. We're going to offset our, our lines here to create this geometry here. Then we're going to put in this curve here. Okay. And then we're going to put in this curve and we're going to offset that to get this curve. It's going to be tricky, but you can see this is assessor maps are, you know, they're funky. So we're trying to build this thing the best we can. Okay, so we're going to use the offset command again, 25 feet. Okay, now when you have two lines like this with a tangent curve in between them, so you got a tangent curve here with a radius of 40 feet, we're just going to use the fillet command so it's a little easier. So we'll run the fillet command. We're going to type in radius of 40 feet. Okay, so now we've got that curve in. Okay, and I already know I've already got this line's already at the right bearing, so I just want to set it to the right length, which on the assessor's map is 135.89. So we're going to run the lengthen command. We're going to hit total 135.89. Okay. So what we did is we offset these two lines. We filleted in this curve at 40 feet, and we set this length. Okay, now I've got a tangent curve here with a radius of 40 feet and a length of 54.35. So we're going to draw that using curve from end of object. Okay, so we're going to do a radius curve to the right. So our radius is positive, 40 feet. Length is 54.35. Okay, now you can also draw a curve from an end of a curve. So I'm going to put in this curve. It's what we call compound curve. Surveyors call that. Okay, compound curve because it curves the same way. This is a reverse curve because it curves the opposite direction. So again, we're going to go curve from end of object, grab our curve. Okay, this time our radius again to the right, so it's positive, is 251.4. And our length is 146.94. Okay, now we've got our two curves, but we got them on the wrong layer. So let's use our match properties and just fix that. 
All right, now I've got the information I need. I can put in this this curve and this other sideline. We're just going to do that with the offset command. So I'm going to offset 25 feet, 25 feet again. Okay, and then I'm going to fillet these to get them to connect. Okay. All right, now that didn't exactly work on this top one, and let me show you why. Actually, it didn't work on either one. We can't use the fillet command. We're going to have to use the extend command uh, because the way they have that assessor map drawn, which I closed. Sorry. Let me pull it up. So when you use a fillet command, it's it's adding a tight curve here. That's not what we... Oh, you know why? It's because I have my radius set to 40. Let's reset our radius to zero and try that again. That's what we want. All right. Sorry, I had my fillet, my radius in there at 40 feet. Then we'll put this on the right layer. Okay, so now what I've got drawn is I've drawn all the way up to here, to this shape, okay? And this video is gonna go too long, so I'm gonna leave this, I'm not gonna draw the rest of this. But I just wanted to show you some, uh, some a little bit trickier stuff there. And uh, you know, if we wanted to, real quick, we could type in our offset command and we could put in the rest of these. Okay, so we're just drawing that right away in. Then put these on the right layer. These are all side lines here. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys um, see how to do some more, uh, acquire some more Kogo skills. Uh, we drew some curves and, did, you know, did some little tricky stuff, put some stuff in perpendicular and kind of, jump back and forth between the sidelines and the center lines to get stuff built. So that's about double the time I normally do for one of these videos. Sorry about that guys, but uh, I hope it helps. Appreciate you watching and uh, we'll do some, uh, we'll do some more Kogo stuff, some more Kogo videos as we get some, some more tricky stuff.